Hello everyone, it's Jazz and welcome back to my channel. I've got a couple of really fun slider Halloween cards today. Um, so you're going to see me start off with the die cut and a stencil with some British Monroe Glow in the Dark Glitter Paste. And this stencil is by Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to um, tape that stencil down to my die cut using some washi tape. And the star of this video is going to be the die cut, um, or the die that you use to make the, the panel with. So you see the panel that I'm adding the color paste to, and then you're going to have two um, little strips with notches cut into them. And those are what make the slider portion of the card. So peeling off the stencil, and I'm going to set that set dry. And you want to make sure anytime you're using glitter paste or any kind of embossing paste um, that you wash your stencils and your tools right away. Otherwise, the uh, medium can get stuck in there and kind of ruin things if you don't wash it off quickly. So we're getting started with um, the Copic coloring, and I've used... Um, a spooktacular set by MFT and Stacey Aklula. And these are really fun um, Halloween dressed up critters. I'm going to use my owl. And I apologize for being slightly out of frame, but there, I fix it. Um, so doing the cape, we're going to use R59, R39, and R37. And I've had requests from a number of you to try to show the marker cap on screen. And I'm doing my best, making an effort um, to make sure that they are on screen. Sometimes a little bit hard um, to get everything in frame. But I am doing my best to accommodate everyone. So then I'm going to end up coloring him twice because I'm going to make two cards. And I've got the majority of the footage making the second one, which we'll see a little, bit, a little bit later on in the video. And this is really simple coloring. These are fairly small images. Um, so if you only have, you know, two um, markers, let's say, instead of the traditional three blending groups, um, just use your two. You'll be fine. I think it's a... Uh, little bit of a self-imposed fallacy that we think when people see the cards we've made that they're going to know um, we didn't have exactly the right thing and and I, I don't know anybody that actually does that it's just kind of in our head um, so all of that just to say to use what you have and enjoy um, the process of what you've got rather than worrying about someone not liking it because it wasn't just right they're going to love it because you took the time to make them hand something with your own two hands and you're gonna, you took the time to send it to them and, and we're thinking of them. So that's really the important, the important part of the whole thing. So we've got our owl almost completely covered. Covered, colored. <laughs> And I do use some tip to tip um, with the feather coloring in the part of this too. And that's another great way to get more out of your markers if you've only got, you know, two out of a, a three blending group or um, you've got two markers that aren't quite blending the way you want them to. Um, tip to tip is taking your lighter marker, touching it to the darker marker, and then coloring and going back and forth until you get the effect you want. And that will help to. Um, blend the two tones together if they're not wanting to play nicely. And if you are new to Copics, um, I highly recommend going over to Sandy on next channel. I'll put her link in the description box um, and taking her classes because they're fantastic, they're self-paced, they're inexpensive, um, and she gives you kind of everything you need to print off and start practicing. Um, and like I said, they're self-paced, so you can go at your own, however you want to do it. But they're a really effective way to learn how to use Copics. 
And you can use some other brands of alcohol markers too. Copics are my favorite ones. I have tried different ones. And in my opinion, the Copics truly are the best ones. But um, not everyone agrees with me. So <laughs> use what you've got and um, enjoy it. So he is almost finished. So we're going to do a different um, style with this second owl. We're going to do some um, pointillism, actually, which is kind of a practice in taking dots and adding dots of color here and there to get your, high, your, your shading. It sounds a lot more complicated than it is. Basically, we're taking our darker marker, our darkest marker which I believe is E79. Um, and just adding dots all over his fur or his feathers. And then working our way to our lightest marker, E74 and then E71. And just gives a different effect, a different look to the owl when he's finished in comparison to using just straight color. And it also makes it nice and easy because you don't really have to do any shading with this method. And I really love how he turned out. So I don't usually make too many cards for Halloween. Um, but this is just such a cute stamp set that I really wanted to play with it. And I really wanted to make some Gryffindor owls. So that was <laughs> that was the um, idea I had in my head when coloring these guys. Was was a uh, Gryffindor. So finishing up with the E71. And then we will move on to his cape. No, we're not. I lied. We're going to do his beak and his feet first. And then we'll move on to the cape, I believe. Can't forget the hat. So now we're going out of the cape. So... R59 is going to be the darkest, which is what I'm using right now. And then we'll do um, R39 and R37 for the midtone and the lightest. And I really like how these three work together to create a really pretty um, deep red shade. This is also really good for poinsettias. And I have one of those coming up in my Christmas series that will start... Probably mid-November. I'm not sure yet. I like the match or something. And there's our second owl. And then I will use the matching dies to cut both those owls out. So we can use them on the cards. And there is all of the colors we used. Okay, so these two strips you see on the top and bottom with the little notches cut. This is what um, is used to create the slider element. So you've got a really thin thread. And then um, I'm using just a bunch of different seed beads that I have in my stash. Um, and you basically are just threading some seed beads on. And then you wrap it around the notch and you work back and forth until you have the whole panel covered. And that just makes a really fun interactive card that you can do just about any theme with. Um, I'm choosing to do, you know, Halloween. But you can make anything out of this and it's so much fun. And so to prevent the beads from sliding down beyond where you can see them. I've just got some foam tape on there and kind of act as like a little stopgap. 
so that the beads stay um, visual, so you're not wasting them. And they just slide back and forth. And it's super cute and super fun. And that dies by MFT as well. And so we're going to go ahead and do the background. So we're going to go ahead and do the background. We're using some Distress Oxide inks, and I'm using Wilted Violet, Salty Ocean, and Blueprint Sketch. If you're not familiar with these inks, they are a fusion hybrid between um, dye and pigment ink, and that means that they stay wet longer, so you can do embossing with them. Um, but the fun thing is, is that they react just like the traditional Distress inks, but they dry with a chalky finish to them. And they also don't blend together um, nearly as easily as a dye ink would, so that the colors layer on top of one another um, versus blending together, so you're not getting mud when you do things like this. So they're really versatile and a lot of fun. And I've just got some watercolor paper that I'm just kind of dipping back and forth into the puddles of ink. So there's the two that I've done. And then I've got this Something Magical um, stamp set by Unity Stamp Company. And I'm going to stamp the sentiment using some Gina K Amalgam, I'm going to say that wrong, um, ink, nice and black. And it's also a um, waterproof. So that's nice. You are something magical. So I'm just going to kind of fit it behind our slider piece and then attach it and trim the excess. I'm putting my and I really love how this turned out. I think it's so pretty. And I do end up having um, three layers of foam tape on the back of this just to make sure that the um, slider element has plenty of room to move back and forth and there's nothing impeding it. And there's our owl, which we will attach with some foam squares. And then that one is done. So there's the two combined, or next to each other, not combined. Um, I just love how they turned out. It's so pretty. That one is so much fun. Gotta wait for it. And there's the glow in the dark stars. Um, I was kind of excited when I watched this footage and you could still see it because when I was trying to get it in the camera, it just was not showing up. So excited about that. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Everything will be in the description box if you want to get your hands on these goodies as well. Happy Halloween and we will catch you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.